And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and we have another great show in store for you. Our guest, let's get right to it. Our guest, Richard Human, artist, New Yorker, artist Brooklynite. New Yorker. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Welcome to the show. Good thank, to have you on. Thank you Good. very much. Thank you yes. very much, Yes, right. Really good. And so let's begin. You're an artist. Tell us about your art. Well, I'm an artist. First off, like you said, I'm an artist. I'm a New Yorker, and I'm a Brooklynite. Mm -hmm. And uh, I moved to Brooklyn uh, in 1986. So I've been here in New York for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came here because... Well, this is where artists came, man. I mean, yep. I'm sure it still is where artists come. You know? Right, right. What is it about New York that attracts the art scene? You know? I've been, I've been in love with the city since I was born. You know, mm -hmm. I grew up upstate New York, and this is like for me, like where life was. This is where action was. This is where the art scene, the music scene, and it's like. For me, New York is like my greatest love of all. It just uh -huh. is, you know. Right, right, right. So tell us, how did you get into art? Did you start out wanting to be an artist, or uh, how did that? Uh... Well, for me, as a, um, a kid, I started painting, you know, drawing when I was young, mm -hmm. and painting from the time of like seven years old on. Okay. I started, my parents brought me to like private classes when I was seven. Mm -hmm. A local painter in Haverstraw, New York, named George White. Okay. And um, you know, so I started there, and then. I went to art school in college, mm -hmm. and then after art school, I, like most people, do, I moved back home for a year, broke, you know, and then Kate and did, got up the nerve to uh, move to mm -hmm. New York. I came to Brooklyn at, uh, right after that. Yeah. All right, great. So uh, tell so what I mean. Your Wikipedia page talks about the type of art you do, but I never trust that kind of stuff. Tell me, well, how would you genreize your art? I mean, do you put I, it I, in some hard, area? It's hard to say, right? Um, yeah. Um, what they call a neo-conceptual artist. Yeah. And, I mean, conceptualism is a historical term. It's like historical conceptualism. Yeah. But I think for me, like, my work is where the idea is equally as important as the way it's constructed or manifested, mm -hmm. the way you view it. Mm -hmm. So, like, one of the ideas, uh, I did a piece called The Same River Twice, which is um, I, I did a 40-foot sculpture of the Hudson River and routed out the Hudson from the wood and filled it with thousands and thousands of words that I cut up from like from the books I read as a child okay. that want that kind of like floated me down to New York City. Mm -hmm. Did you do that with the actual books that you read as no, a child? No, no, no. I would never touch. I would never destroy a book. I've never even like marked in a book. You know, okay. books to me are like you, mean, you know. Right. Or, but uh, no, I, I got the text. Nowadays, it's easy to get the text. You know, I either purchased it online or, or you can get a lot of the free stuff from Shakespeare and. I was then brought it into a program, print, printed on a page, and cut up the words. Yes. I see. Yeah. Okay, great. And then you actually, so the paper, there were little slips of paper with the words from the books. Yeah, I mean, we printed it out, and I would strip with a, a razor blade, cut up the words, and then fill the entire river with them. And was it actually, did it look like the Hudson River? I mean, yeah, was yeah, it, I wrote it out exactly the Hudson River, you know, mm -hmm. from it. And, Using um, a router, you mean? Like yeah, a, a, from my art studio. I've right. been in Brooklyn, yeah. Right, great. And, but that came from a piece I did, uh, oh, about 17 years ago now, for mm -hmm. a little curriculum vitae where I took everything ever written about me uh, from my birth certificate, my passport, my high school oh. diploma, college diploma, everything ever written, and cut out letter by letter of the actual documents this time. Uh -huh. I destroyed my original documents. Oh, I see. And filled a glass urn with all the writings about me from the time I was born to the time of my exhibition. And basically... All of that, the letters, the text written about me would equal my body weight had I been cremated. Oh, and so, really? And, so, and the piece is called Curriculum Vitae, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, so my work is like along those kinds of things. Right, 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 right. All right, great. So how did you, uh, did, did you start out doing that? kind? You started out as a painter? I started out as a painter, yeah, doing, you know, as a young kid trying to capture realistic life or portraits and you know mm -hmm. i'm talking very young kid sure and but they're obviously where you know they weren't realistic they uh -huh. were as realistic as that could be and then i kind of fell in love with surrealism as many high school kids will yeah and then from there uh you know it was like the dot as i kind of ran the gamut of all the art right, right. but i stumbled so, across minimalism probably in college and just found that to be the kind of work that just really Right. I, I fell in love with. It. Okay, so so let's go to your let, let's let's jump from the from what got you into this sure. into uh, what you're doing today because you just came back from Pakistan. I was in uh, Karachi, we, yeah, yeah. Right. So what bring what? So that's interesting to me. Well, we've had we I had Kinza on, who's an artist. I don't know if you know her, but she's a Pakistani artist. I had here on the show okay. about six or seven months ago, and we were talking 
about her art in regards to the Trump travel ban, which was reinstated just recently. Yeah, we, and she I was doing like a thing, that. right, with, um, with uh, she was doing a thing with uh, the, the headscarves done as an American flag and other national yeah, flags and things like that. I don't know if you saw that, yeah. Well, we, I had a difficult time, you know, um, getting over there. Uh, we had a dif difficult time getting the visa, actually. Yeah. Uh, I received my visa the day I was traveling. We had to yeah. fly for it months earlier. Right. But um, anyway, it was an amazing trip, though. Uh, yeah. Amin Golgi is, is a curator and a, a very incredible Pakistani artist. Mm -hmm. He curated the Karachi Biennale that yeah. had about 140 artists from all over the world. And I was there from the United mm -hmm. States. And it was an incredible experience. I how, mean, was your, how was your reaction to you as an American, given all the things we just discussed? Uh, the people are amazing. I mean, it's like anything else, right? You, you've, got, you've got the government and then you have the people. Yeah. And they are two separate things, right? right? So I don't know what the Pakistani government, the United States government, what their issues are or aren't, uh, but the people are just wonderful. Right. I, I stayed in Karachi. I did the Biennale there. In fact, I, I mentioned the same river twice. I, over there, I recreated the Indus River. Yeah, all oh, right. And filled it with, with Urdu text. Well, I from, see. From people that wrote to me about like what their dreams and hopes of Pakistan would be. Did you have to create that there, or did you bring well, it, it with was you? A, it was a bit of both. The, the actual sculpture itself was built there. Oh, I see. Uh, by Amin's crew, uh, and then we cut up all the text here in my studio uh -huh. over the course of three months. Oh, I see. And, uh, but, uh, and then I also... So you were bringing a bag of, of text. Yes, exactly. Did anybody question that well, at the we co customs? It over okay. We, we were waiting for the last minute, man, but there was yeah. no, no guarantee we'd get the visa. Yeah, so tell me a little about the adventure of getting... It wasn't so easy to get into the country, right? It, w it was... Uh, uh, it was just difficult. I mean, you know, I would go every two days to the to the embassy uptown, right across from here. But for me, it's uptown because I live in Brooklyn. Yeah, I'd go every two days, and they were wonderful also. But it just never arrived. And then the visa never arrived, no matter how much exactly. you came and asked about it. They just you know, said once it once it kind of got into Pakistan, it was out of the local embassy control here. Uh, I see the Pakistani embassy. Right. But, you know, with the help of the American embassy, the consulate mm -hmm. in, in Karachi and Islamabad, <coughs> they were able to like, right. make it happen. My, it did arrive. And so I there was some happen. financing from the U.S. government that was involved. I mean, you they got a grant. They were amazing. You know, I have to be honest. Uh, they were just amazing, yes. I did a, uh, it was a, a travel grant to uh, lecture as well. So I went right. to, after being in Karachi, I flew to Islamabad and lectured yeah. in Islamabad, which was... An amazing, heartwarming experience. Islamabad, where is that in relation to? It's, that's it's, in the north. It's about an hour flight, so it's probably Pakistan. Forgive me if I'm wrong about this, but I would say it's about the size of Florida, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more bigger. So we'd go like from Miami to the northern part right. of Florida, and Tallahassee, like, or something. Exactly. Like yeah. Probably. Well, I think it's actually longer than that, actually. Okay. But um, so I was up in Islamabad lecturing at an amazing university. And, uh, right. Uh, so that's right by, that's, Islamabad is up in the north. It's sort of more in the I area could, I where. I drive to Kabul in two hours. If right, 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 right. All right, great. So, so and you had, a, by amazing, you said that, I mean, people were real interested. They were coming around you. They were asking you yeah, questions. Yeah, you know, the, the, I, when I lectured up there, and it was a two-day kind of lecture workshop, everybody are, were just people, mm -hmm. right? And they were interested in the art. Of course, there's still they didn't, they're not interested in the politics <coughs> or you're American no, or anything we, like that. We talked about we worked on conceptual art pieces and they were able to, yeah. you know, show me their work and I showed them my work and, and it was a, a group of students, maybe 40, 50 students. Yeah. And in fact, it worked out so good that I ended up lecturing again in Karachi mm -hmm. at another u amazing university in Karachi. That's so you were, they were asking for you to come around and it to was, talk at amazing, different places, yeah, right? Amazing. And so the, the, all this crazy politics, none of that came up. You were Trump, all of that stuff came up. Only from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So Nobody asked about it or anything like no, that. No, I mean, you know. He's like our problem. I know in other countries they laugh and say, do you think we think about your president all the time? We have our own problems. I, but, you know, like, what did, what's the old line? Like, uh, when, Ameri when America sneezes, the world gets a cold? Yes. Well, the world has a flu right now. All right, know, okay. This guy. Oh, really? You know, so it's having that effect. But the, <clears throat> but the reality is, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, we, we, it was all kept to art for the most I part. See, good. We had uh, the the Karachi Biennale was an amazing experience and so professionally well done. Mm -hmm. and, and in the gallery, how how was it presented? Where was it presented? Oh, it was presented over I think twelve locations throughout uh, Karachi. I see. I was in one of the main locations. That the, there was a big school there, mm -hmm. kind of like our PS One or even bigger than our PS One here in New York, and which is an art, <coughs> you know, yeah, part of the mall. Sure, sure. And and uh, 
so I mean it was it was just you know I mean yes there are differences I had to have an armed guard <clears throat> you know uh, I, the embassy made sure I had an armed guard and a driver at all times and mm-hmm. you know it, but hey, it was great though I mean I had no issues I, really? I moved to Brooklyn in 85 so what's you know right that was because the, the government yeah. had some interest in you and so they uh, yeah if I, I were just a private citizen you I just I wouldn't right right right, right. Yeah. But because, so you had a so you, you got this grant and the, mm. the you, what was the interest of the US government I mean this is is this something they're trying to like get some connection back for yeah. you know no, citizen I think it's like interaction. You know, shaping hearts and minds kind of yeah, thing yeah right <clears throat> which is great. They were just amazing. They were an yeah. incredible group of people that I worked with. Right. You know, from great. The U.S. government. Uh huh. Yeah. So and the Indus River. So did it follow the Indus River? How did you do? Yeah, do you have I a mean, map? I mean, do it's you... the same thing again. You know, I I took the Indus River from a satellite image and then scaled it up and blew it up to a forty foot or more by thirty foot sculpture, uh-huh. and then it was marked and then routed out and then filled with all the words again. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Wonderful. So it actually mimics. It's this the exact shape of the Indus River. What kind of wood did you use? Did you use like I just indigenous MDF wood? It's usually easier. It's painted uh-huh. uh, matte black MDF. Uh-huh. Like on, a, on a, like a floating platform. Okay, wow. But before that, though, I was also in uh, Venice this summer. Yeah, I was going to say that. So that's where we're going to jump halfway around the world so to a Vietnam different type of culture, right? Actually, Venice. twice this summer. Uh, Where's once. Venice? Isn't that in Los Angeles? Exactly. <laughs> no, it's yeah. no, it's in Italy. Yeah, I know. I actually had a chance to live in uh, Venice a couple years ago. I've been there a lot of times. It's a big location for the art world. Yeah. So the Venice Biennale is arguably you know, the most or one of the most mm-hmm. important... Um, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, uh, Venice is like the... I live there at the Emily Harvey Foundation, which is an art organization that provides housing mm-hmm. for artists and a retreat. I mean, I was there... How's the water time. thing? How's the... Uh, the is there... Um, I never... You know, you know, like the well, water's I mean, rising, or did you notice it or anything? Well, I mean, it's not something you see every day, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, in other words, I'm not out there with the measuring things. So right. if you go in November, it floods, and then probably yeah. in the springtime... Sure. I was there during the summer, but I've been there all year round, so I've right. been there. But I've walked across San Marco on the raised boards. Right, when it was wet. Yeah, yeah, when it was yeah. wet, right? So, because, of course, if people don't know, Venice is famous for being a city built on, on canals. Right, right, yeah, right in the lagoon. It's full right. of, full of uh, you know, canals, big right. and small. And the whole city is like a work of art. The whole city is magic. Is if yeah. you haven't been there, I mean, obviously millions... They get like 54 million uh, tourists a year right. or some crazy. But best amount. to go in the winter, I'm told. It, do Italy in the wintertime. My first time there was uh, about mid or late November, and mm-hmm. it was fantastic. Right, when no I lived crowds. There, it was summertime. I lived there right. in August. and, and um, Italians, I've been to Italy a few times, and people always say to me, why do Americans come when it's <clears> 110 <throat> degrees? Well, because that's when Americans are I know, that's how I have to explain them, right. That's when the vacation is, right. right? Because the best time to come is November, they always say. Or For me, my travel, I do travel a lot. I think within the past year and a half, I was in the, like Taipei, Hong Kong, Helsinki, Tampada, fin- uh, uh, Venice twice, uh, Karachi, and Islamabad. That's what is it about your, uh, your, your art that uh, draws all, that, all this interest around the world, this international interest? I, I, I when did this start happening? When did you notice there was an international interest in your f- Well, internationally, the first time was 2001 in Belgium, I believe. Mm-hmm. I did a show in Belgium. Uh, my work had shipped before to other places, usually in group exhibitions. But in, at that point, um, 2001, I did a show in Belgium at Borkemer Gallery. And then from there, I started traveling at first to like California, my show, and then Project Row Houses mm-hmm. in Houston, Texas. And then all of a sudden, it became Europe. Mm-hmm. But it's like anything, it's a follow the money situation. So during that time period, the euro was very, very strong, and, and a lot. And Europe has different programs set up also for art, right? Sure. So I was doing, <clears throat> you know, gallery exhibitions, and then I did my first museum, solo museum exhibition in 2003. Mm-hmm. And I guess that really opened the doorway to. Right, and so you invitations. In, uh, in Kemi, Finland, I did an right. exhibition there. I and continue to go back to Finland about every year or two mm-hmm. since then. Sure, sure. So uh, what exactly is uh, conceptual art? What does that mean? Yeah, right. I, could, I was trying to look <coughs> it up. I looked it up. On, I clicked on the link to go to the conceptual art on Wikipedia. Yeah. And, well, I went to neo-conceptual, and then they said, go to conceptual. Then I went to conceptual. And I still couldn't figure out. There well, wasn't I mean, even any pictures. Again, that's conceptual art. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the, the least pictures, the more conceptual it is. Uh-huh. No, for me, it's hard to say. How do you put a moniker on something like that? I yeah. don't know, right? right. So for me, it, like, again, my, I, my things are idea-driven. So I'm not a painter. I'm not a traditional sculpture. Mm-hmm. That w- I don't, for me, 
<clears throat> Sorry, I got a little yeah, cold here. That's right. But um, for me, I don't like work with steel and build a shape out of steel, or I don't work with wood to build a shape out of wood. To me, I have an idea. Mm-hmm. And that idea then generates what it's going to become. Mm-hmm. So I don't have like, I'm not working in materials and going in my studio and just welding some things together or building and nailing mm-hmm. it. I, I have this idea and then I strip away like everything that's unnecessary. And then if it's built from glass, it's because it mm-hmm. needed to be built from glass. Like an idea in your head of what <clears throat> you think it should look like, whatever you're going to do next. Exactly. Like right. the piece I did in, in, in Venice during the Biennale, which yeah. was at Palazzo Mora on the Strada Nova this year, <clears throat> is a piece that it's called Ascension. Mm-hmm. And I created a virtual reality. What I did was I took constellations. I created my own constellations. Mm-hmm. And virtual reality is where you can put a tablet or a smartphone up. And like if I'm looking at you now, yeah. <clears throat> if I put something GPS, I can drop something in front of you and actually have something either like right behind you and you see it oh, in the smartphone. I see, right. As it goes in front as it goes in front of me, I see. So you would if the camera, for example, was behind you, as you did that, the audience would see whatever the, was there. Um, like right. most people know from Pokemon, right? Yes. Like the Pokemon's virtual reality. We could have done that actually here. We, we still can. We, we could we could pull down the pull the, we have blue behind there and exactly. green. There's a green one over there. So I created a, a constellation system. My piece is called Ascension. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the city of Venice, oh. using an app called Membit, which okay. is the uh, um, which is the vir- uh, virtual reality app, and um, I then dropped twelve of these constellations in the sky all over Venice. Oh, I see. And uh, there are things I created, like I it was a narrative I did of pop mm-hmm. culture of the of the twentieth century. Right. And so I put like the Great Wars, World War One, World War Two, and. You know, so you would walk around Venice, and then you'd be able to look right. up in the sky and see the constellations floating over the entire city. Right. That sounds like... Now, I noticed that you, you, one of your influencers was Nam June Pike, right? Yes. Nam June, um, not only was the influence, he was, he was actually somebody I knew. Okay. And, yeah. and his video, he was famous for his video work, and... Uh, he was the video pioneer. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of like... Nam June, to me, I, I love, like, the real early work of Nam mm-hmm. June, and... I would say like Donald Judd is also mm-hmm. one of my all the little ca- all the little TVs he would have in a big pile, exactly. and so then his friend, the woman who used to be topless yeah, the and cello play, player, cello player, right, and all that, right. I knew Don Nam June, and I also knew his wife Shigeko. I showed in the same gallery uh-huh. uh, back when I was young, and they, you know, it was a gallery that took on younger artists and also right. had a, a stable of very well. Is, is that conceptual art? What he did is that this similar? Or just I'm just not video sure art? Would label, you know, Nam June, but his work is definitely conceptual. I mean, yeah. the TV Buddha piece. I did a. I did a. Um, an homage to him when I lived in Korea. I did a mm-hmm. residency program for three months in Korea. Mm-hmm. And, right. you know, Nam June is Korean. Right. Or was Korean. And, sure. and uh, so, I, you know, his piece is like the Buddha statue with the TV on the Buddha. Mm-hmm. And he's looking at his own image in the TV set. Uh-huh. So that's conceptual, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Whether right. it's video or whatever. Sure. But um, I did one where I made the Buddha from rice. I called right. it Buddha Bop. Right. Like Bop is rice. Right. I, I've been as a reporter to a few biennales at different places. And I was in, in Lyon, France once a few years ago in different places working Amazing. through magazines. And I love those when they would do that. You know, yes. that incredible, like in a room. I, is this conceptual art? It was a room filled with, a room that was totally filled with balloons. I guess it could be. You and like I walked it. in a door, and everybody's like, what has to walk, to get through the room, you have to walk through a whole room full of red balloons. You know, it could be like... It's unbelievable. It's that, or, you know, it could be the Freudian, sometimes the cigar is just a cigar, it could be just a room of balloons. You know? Yeah, right. But right. you don't know, and that's the thing, yeah. you know. For me, I don't, I don't really define my work. I, you let other people define your work, right? Uh-huh. So I don't define my work in any particular way. Right, because, you let them do it, the, the yeah, people do it, right? I, ju- I just... But you I like to fill a room or make you make a statement that's fairly large, isn't it? It's like usually it, it, a lot of times my work can be very very minuscule, but okay. other times my work can be incredibly expansive. Like right. again, the 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 augmented reality piece that I did in Venice. How do you convince somebody to let you have a whole huge room in their Biennale? It's half the battle. People think art. People think this have this notion, I guess, of like a composer of, you know, the mad Beethoven or Mozart in the room right. just composing and. <laughs> And, but, you know, as an artist, it's, it's a business, right? I run a business. So uh, I have to get up in the morning and I'm emailing with curators all over the world or gallery owners or grant applications. And mm-hmm. so I, I won a uh, Paula Krasner mm-hmm. grant a couple of years That's ago. That's why they call it show business, right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a business, right? Right. No business, <laughs> no show. Exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, that's the downside of it. So what I, my schedule is I get up every morning around 8, 7, 8. 
I do my emailing, all my stuff until around 11. Mm -hmm. And then it's studio till 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. And then if I'm working with the other side of the world, I'll often have to do emails again 11 to 12. I eat mm -hmm. dinner around 12 and 1 every single well, night. All right, because it's the other side of the world is daytime when it's sleeping time Yeah, like here. tonight I'm actually dealing with Pakistan again. Uh -huh. And uh, what I'm doing in... in uh, yeah. Um, I'm actually dealing with, with people tonight at 2 in the morning. Uh -huh. So I have to make sure that I'm alert and awake right. at 2 a.m. tonight. Right, right. So it's a, an artist's job. is It's not like that rock song where Money for Nothing or anything like that. No, no, no. no, no. Mark it's, Knopfler, yeah. Yeah, Mark Knopfler. Knopfler. It's not like that. Yeah, exactly. It's not Money for Nothing, right? No. no Get no, your no. chicks for free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except yeah. you're married. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly, another story. Yeah, yeah. And I want my MTV. Yeah, right, with right. Sting opening. Now, Sting does not open for my work. You know? Right, right. So it, it comes, there's a lot of work that goes into one of those presentations. It's all work, man. Well, because, you know, I mean, every time I show, like, what I would call modern or conceptual art or something like that to my students, you know, I, there's always somebody who says, oh, that looks easy. That's not like a real painting, right? Or that's not real. And I always say, do you know the work that went into that? Well, my, I, the I, preparation and everything. One of my favorite things, a friend of mine, I don't even know if he makes art anymore, Steve yeah. Burkhart. And his studio was next to mine in Brooklyn for a long time. And his paintings are like, you know, gestural paintings, you know, kind of like abstract expressions. Mm -hmm, right. And I remember one time somebody came to him at an open studio and said like, oh, how long did it take you to make that painting? Right. right? And he said, my entire life. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. I'm going to remember that yeah, one so for my students. The truth, though, There's right? always never, one student who says that. I never forgot it, you know, yeah. because it does take your entire life. Right, you know? right, right, right. Even if a painting or a drawing is, is, is minimalist, white, or... Right. And while a huge salon art detailed peasant painting from 19th century France probably took that guy three days to make. But, or, you know, in those yeah. days, too, we don't forget, too. It's like they had assistants also doing a lot yeah. of paintings. Painters would come in later and right. finish it up. And yeah. You know, art is art. It's it's what's in the mind and what's in the heart that mm -hmm. matters, you know? Right. Although, don't get me wrong, I, I study traditional drawing and painting and yeah. sculpture, mm -hmm. and I think it's fantastic to learn that right. education. And it's actually that most, I would say, a good number of, of what modern artists had, when they started out, they were doing traditional art, maybe. I think you have to, because... Salvador think, Dali, yeah, look at his so, old painting, his well, original paintings. Yeah. Exactly, but also, you know, when you're young, you have to, right? Because uh, when you're young... You have to understand what a line is and what form is and what shadow is, even if you never use it again the rest of your life. Uh -huh. I think it's still important to understand the language that you're speaking. Mm -hmm. It's like a writer, right? You, you're not going to, you know, the beats, they've, they read regular books before they, you know, E.E. Right. E. Cummings, or before the beats, you know, before he started taking things. Wrote on a roll of toilet paper. Exactly. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, right. You have to understand what the language you're speaking. Yeah. So, I, you know, I studied that language early on and continue to study every day. It's, mm -hmm. I don't care how old you are, the journey is still mm -hmm. going all the time. Right, I'm learning right, right. every single day. And funny enough, with that lecture like in Islamabad recently, and I don't teach, right? I'm just an artist, right? Mm -hmm, so yeah. I, Not that I don't teach, but I, this is what I do for a living. Sure. But um, I do lectures and get together with you know, organizations like that. But every time, I think I learn more from them than they, you know, than they do from me. Because mm -hmm. I'm right. learning that's again. A, that's like a teacher. Their, their that, that's a definition of a teacher. And their, yeah. yeah, the stuff that they bring, you know, to the table, it's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it makes me think at some point I would like to, you know, teach more on a regular basis. Now it's mm -hmm. just like a lecture here and there. Right, right, to set up, to help young people who are just starting out to discover their talents, you know, yeah, their inner, they might not have that yeah, chance. I yeah. think it's amazing, actually. Right, right. Actually, you'd be great in, uh, in, in, like, up in the Bronx since there's some schools out in Hunts Point and stuff like that. We, you know, <laughs> cool. we, could, we could make a revolution up there, right? Yeah, that would be fantastic. You'd be surprised. But it's funny. I've also, like, lectured at Brown University. So it's the other end of that you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I think you'd be surprised. I mean, and I'm purposely saying that because I know you'll be at Harvard or Brown and all those places. Okay. But I'm, 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 I want to put the bug in your mind. Think of PS48. No, it would be cool anywhere because you know? I think the idea is, like, all you want it are people, whether they're students, whether they're friends, whomever, who have a thirst for knowledge and understanding yeah. the way I still do. Yeah. I, I'm still constantly, always, yes. always, always with this thirst. I've right. never lost that. You right. know? It's always it's a journey and an exploration my entire life. Is that what art means to you? It, 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 does, it does mean to me, yes, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Art and but it's beyond art for me because it's literature, I, you know, and movies and uh -huh. you know it, it's everything, right? Oh, it's pictures and, of light. It doesn't matter, even wherever I travel to, whether it's the most benign, quote-unquote, place or the most exotic, I still go on with, like, big open eyes. I'm mm -hmm. never, ever bored. I'm never right. tainted, you know. Right, right, right. And New York, can, you can be tainted sometimes. Right. For all those struggling artists out there who are tainted by New York, yeah. what do you say to them? 
never give up, man, because you're the only person that can beat you. Nobody else can beat you. I beat myself, trust me. I mean, you know, there's times that you just uh, beat yourself down and you don't mm -hmm. want to wake up in the morning. Yeah. And, but you have to, right? You have to. You're the only one that could ever stop you. That Nobody else can stop you. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember George White, one of the first things I learned as an artist, he said, when I was like eight years old, right? He said, as an artist, you can't make a mistake. Yep. You can't make a mistake. You okay. can always paint over it, throw it away, start over, mm -hmm. it, it exists with right. you. If that's what that TV artist guy who paints really fast in a half hour, <laughs> yeah. he always says that. There's no mistakes in our world, right, 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 right. in the artist world, right? Oh, God, I we wish call I with the curly hair. Yeah, right, 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 right. right. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. He says that. Well, he's a wise man, Bob Ross. Yeah, ab absolutely. And yeah. Then, uh, but that, you know, to, to me, art is, um, it's everything. Yeah, I, I've, I've actually... It's life. I've done nothing but this my entire life, and this is the thing. And my, a friend of mine... If a friend of mine pulls up in a Ferrari, I have not even the slightest tinge of jealousy, right? But it's like it's all to me. It's all about the creation, the work. It's not about physical right. possession. It's not about. It's not even about like what right you get, what you know review you get, mm -hmm. or if you sell or not. I don't remember like what I sold or who I sold to or who I didn't sell to. Mm -hmm. My my best piece is always the next piece. It's not the last piece. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's just that's interesting. That's the way it is. You know? Right. How can people find out more about your work? Well, probably the easiest way is my website. It's richardhuman.com. Spell it. Uh, I don't know have a name. Richard, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-H-U-M-A-N-N. -N. Two N's at the two end. Two N's at the end. Dot human com. plus one N. Exactly. <laughs> human being right. with two, yes, with two N's at right. the end. Right. Yes. Dot com. Exactly. Right. And that's where people can see your work and get an idea of what you we're doing. You get an idea. Of course, yeah. like anything else. You can Are you ca anything coming up? No, man, it's been a very, very busy year. We might go over to, uh, we might be heading over to Finland in January, mm -hmm. but this comes off, it's like a band coming off tour. How about here in New York where we can see you, anything? I just, I did a show about a year and a half ago here, so it's every like two, two and a half to three years. So within the next year, I imagine something will be coming up here right, in right. Chelsea. Oh, and then so you can come back on the show and tell us more I would about love that. To. I'd love right. To. Half a minute, to uh, sum up, uh, what, 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 what would you want people to take away with from? Take well, away from again, you, uh, uh, as an artist, there's no such thing as making a mistake. You're the only person that could stop you. And that's just the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And there's been a thousand times I've been, you know, not tempted, but, mm -hmm. you know, New York is tough, man. The world's tough sometimes. Yeah. But you get mm -hmm. up and you do it, and, and that's it. I have no choice. I, know, I don't have a choice. In this. Right. You this put yourself in that situation. Sometimes I said I put yourself in a choice where you have no choice but to work hard and get the job done. It's bigger than me. Right. I don't yeah. have a choice. Right. There you go. All right, great. So thank you, Richard Human, for joining thank us. Thank you so much. Richard. Really appreciate it. It was a great thank show. You. Thank you so and, much. And uh, we'll have you on next time you do something here in New York. Great. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Welcome to